ಓಂ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಅಸ್ತು ಭಗವನ್ ವಿಶ್ವೇಶ್ವರಾ ಮಹಾದೇವಾಯತ್ರಿಪುರಾಂತಕಾಯತ್ರಿಕಾಲಾಗ್ನಿ ಕಾಲಾಯ ಕಾಲಾಗ್ನಿ ರುದ್ರಾಯ ನೀಲಕಂಠಾ ಮೃತ್ಯುಂಜಯ ಸರ್ವೇಶ್ವರಾ ಸದಾಶಿವಾ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ ಮಹಾದೇವಾಯ ನಮಃ we saw yesterday meaning of the word stotram and the rest of the meaning kind of came along in the first verse that we studied but just so that we have it on record aparadha omissions commissions kshama forgiveness accommodation apana from up to gain so gaining this pardon kshama apana for who from who shiva this is what it means a text of 16 verses and in the time that we may have we have we may not be able to go very deep into all the verses one by one but it doesn't matter because we have the whole gist of what is being communicated uh, without a shadow of doubt we will have that so we saw the first verse it's a wake up call and for those who might be thinking why should the prenatal stage be described in such abject terms after all the birth of a baby is a happy occasion everybody distributes sweets and uh, says congratulations and uh, the the mother and the father to be are ecstatic most of the time and uh, why should it be why should it be, be described in why should we only be so negative and look at all the possible pre uh, birth defects congenital defects and various difficulties in birth whether it is breech birth c section what else is there cord wrapped around the neck so many so many difficulties are there so why is it talking about that and why talk why the why the image that is very difficult to unsee when it is once it is being presented of the baby you know swimming in the placental fluid of its own waist why these kinds of drastic things and what what do these unsavory images what kind of a place may they have in in scripture isn't it supposed to be all sacred and then you know eschew these kinds of discussions well the answer is no because this is first of all part of life and secondly as uh, uh, we discussed yesterday in the night uh, satsang that the point is along with the atonement there is a there is a personal growth that that the author of the te- text is trying to make the reader go through there is some transformation that is there and what is the transformation the trans uh, the transformation is called vairagya gaining dispassion for birth for all the six modifications we talked about yesterday starting with birth because this is you know this is similar you know see modern psychology has this thing called uh, what is that called aversion therapy you know for repeat offenders and sex offenders things like that so they show something which is wonderful alongside a image of some sludge and horrible things are shown so that the the person undergoing the therapy this is done in prisons etc and worldwide and the person undergoing the therapy uh, uh, you know develops an aversion because of certain images you know which the person is not used to which are juxtaposed with the images of the whatever one desires the object of want the object of desire 
it works. Perhaps they got it from <laughs> this, uh, this uh, Shiva Aparadha, text like Shiva Aparadha, Kshama Panastotram. There is another one, Atma Bodha, which urges us to look at all the delectable things in the world uh, akin to bird droppings, crow do droppings, ka kavishta. It is actually said like this. So there is a purpose for this. This is not just, you know, indulging in some, you know, impolite talk or something unsacred, something like that. So this is the spirit with which we have to take it, because the next verse is also going to discuss these kinds of situations. So therefore, the, you know, when we think about all the possible things that can go wrong for the baby that is yet to be born, all the things that can go wrong. The mother to be could just slip and fall, and so many things could go wrong. Some kind of congenital defects. So many possibilities are there. And these possibilities make birth itself a painful experience. And this is not some kind of a negativity. This is looking at what, what, is, what birth is. Because what is birth? A product of the, the karma, whatever one has done, that is what this birth is about. So one's parentage, one's, uh, you know, place of birth, time of birth. And everybody was getting very excited yesterday because it was a Tuesday, not a Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday. Because if you look at uh, the calendar, what is it? Two, two, and then 2022, 2 22. And then they were getting very excited. Oh, this must be a wonderful time, wonderful date. And so, like this, everything, there is a, some, there is some kind of a synergy. There is the, the, the whole universe is not bereft of patterns. And that pattern we call Ishvara. The name of those patterns. In, and the name of the laws, the name of the order that is so vast, wide, widespread, discernible in every action, in, even in the law of karma, very, very discernible in the physiological order, in the biological order, in the karmic order, and finally also in the psychological order. All this is there, psychological order of dukkha, sorrow, Krodha, anger, fear, bhaya, lobha, greed, avarice, madha, matsarya, different kinds of, you know, arrogance, jealousy. There is an order to that. It is not a, an, the emotion of an individual. It may be manifesting in the individual mind as something which needs to be overcome. But when we start to look deeply and why this emotion is there, then we are touching Ishvara. That is why this connection, this prayerful connection has the power to neutralize these karmas. A word for karma in Sanskrit is adrishta. Adrishta means invisible because you don't know when karma will attack. The whole morning goes very well. And then suddenly in the afternoon, there is some catch. Somebody said something I did not like. Somebody did something that was offensive, that was hurtful, that was painful. Like this, it keeps on going. And so therefore, you don't know when karma comes. Whether it's good karma or bad karma, we don't know when it comes. The results of action, when they visit, they don't, uh, you know, send you an SMS. Hello, I'm coming tomorrow <laughs> to 2.22 <laughs> at 2.22 p.m. Uh, please be ready for me. It doesn't take an appointment. Results of karma do not take an appointment. They just arrive. That's why it's called adrishta. And for a sadhaka, a mumukshu, the seeker of freedom from this uh, you know, this loop of samsara, which comprises action, reaction, action, results of action, which I don't like, then again, more action in order to stave off those results of action, etc., etc. For such a person, for this mumukshu, the one who wants to be free of samsara, then it is very, very wise 
to create new karma that will fructify in ways that will keep me on the path. It's very, very easy to get derailed, especially as one is getting ready to leave the ashram. <laughs> very, very easy to get derailed because here there is, a, there is a structure, there is a routine, there is a support system. There are ways in which, you know, there is, you know, one can relate to the highest aspects of oneself very, very easily. But once one leaves from here, one gets ready to leave, then it is not so easy to keep that routine, to keep those structures in place and to continue to grow. Their effort is needed because the world is vast and also one is going back to a familiar situation, a familiar state of affairs and familiarity always is based on older patterns. Before one had uh, initiated a certain kind of transformation. And so therefore it, is, uh, uh, therefore, it is very practical. Prayer in the Hindu tradition is extremely practical. It is very practical to, to pray for some kind of a respite from these kinds of situations. And the prayer is a good karma, naturally, because it, be, because it is the only action, other than perhaps giving of charity, the only action that harnesses what we call the free will. All other actions come from the pressure I talked about last night. The pressure to gain something, the pressure to keep something at bay. Every action has some kind of a karma behind it. Therefore, every action is bound, even though we wax eloquent about free will, free will, what free will? <laughs> every action is bound in desire. Every action is bound by something, some agenda that I have, something that I want to gain, something that I want to get rid of. This is what every action is except when you give something freely without expecting something in return. This is called Purta Karma or when you pray, Ishta Karma. When you pray, you need not pray. Supposing somebody wants money, they need not pray. They can go have plan how to rob a bank, how to defraud somebody. So many things, so many ways of getting money are there. But instead, they, they chant Shri Suktam, a hymn of prayer for Goddess of Prosperity, Lakshmi. Instead, they chant that. So there is, a, there is the difference because here the will is free. The will is free to choose the most dharmic of choices. And that is why prayer becomes Punya, Punya Karma, because uh, and then the phala that it gives, the results of prayer, are therefore uh, uh, favorable. So the whole day, one is ducking various kinds of adrishta, invisible karmic forces that are out to get one. So, uh, so you know, that is how one's life is experienced. Duck here, duck there, oh no, avoid this, avoid that. And in fact, the Shri Rudram, you know, says as much. Praise to Lord Shiva in the form of Rudra. Who is this Rudra? The one who is wielding the bow and arrow. Spare me from the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Perhaps this is from Hamlet. Perhaps Shakespeare must have studied Shri Rudram. We don't know. There is a little bit of Vedanta in uh, so some of his plays and some of his sonnets. So spare me from this fortune. And, and the Lord Rudra is seen as a hunter coming after you with the arrows with your name written on it because these are the arrows of Karma Phala which he has in his quiver. And he just comes to you like this. And you say, please, Namaste Rudra Manyave, Utota Ishave Namaha. <coughs> Excuse me. I invoke you. Please calm down. You're asking Bhagavan to calm down. 
come down from releasing <laughs> my karma back to me i pray to you have such beautiful arms and oh they look very strong please keep them <laughs> quiet and on the sides don't uh, engage in that and as a bonus i pay, pray to the quiver why is it called quiver because the, the number of arrows there makes you quiver because they're all having your name on it please keep your quiver also in a shanta peaceful state i pray to the quiver i pay, pray to the arrows i pray to the bow look there are so many adharmic people on this side and that's it go there <laughs> take care of them don't come to me please 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 you know even though it looks like a prayer of desperation here in this playful and desperate engagement what is happening between the jiva and ishvara between the individual devotee and the object of devotion bhagavan is that new karma is being created in this surrender in this supplication in this call for help in this atonement new karma is being created and that new karma is also adrishta punya karma is also called adrishta papa karma is also called adrishta so this adrishta you know he goes and attacks that adrishta thereby vaccinating one from the karmic effects just like the covid 19 vaccines all over the world and then when you go for the vaccine what are you told you are told it may not prevent the disease but it will make it definitely milder you will stay alive you will stay out of the hospital and then the recovery time will be quicker the disease even if you get it will be milder and shorter in duration that is what one is told so similarly the prayas chitta karma and any kind of a prayer karma prayerful karma is not you know we may not be immediately or fully able to ward off the entire force of the prarabdha prarabdha means the the daily onslaught of karma we may not be able to ward off but what we can do is definitely make sure that one is protected so that it is one is uh, one is inoculated against the effects against the virus of one's own karmic residues from this and other lives so how my, how many vaccines are enough <laughs> even there there is a big uh, debate raging first they said two and then they said three and now they are saying four and then they said you have to take something every six months every year it goes on and on and on and likewise here how much prayer is enough well you know you can't have enough prayer because if you look at the karmic residues there is a there is one one thing called sanchita karma a big account an endless account of karma from which this particular karma to be endured in this life is crafted endless karmas and then uh, so one piece of that karma it's just like a huge ball of dough out of which one little piece is broken and then you make pizza every pizza looks different each pizza is a jiva okay yeah it has different toppings but what is the similarity they all go into the oven okay <laughs> the oven of samsara to be cooked this is what it is and then this is you know this is how it is then after after some time rescued by the compassionate guru because of the prayer trahi maam pahi maam save me help me take care of me please do this for me and then what happens is that when you know this is what is called prarabdha karma sanchita karma big ball of dough if you can imagine some kind of italian restaurant where they already have made this big dough out of that the dough taken out for one pizza rolled and thrown into the sky and then put toppings and this is this is one life 
one life you just finish that much karma but if it's a human life you end up gaining more karma because one is abusing the free will all the time and uh, doing all kinds of things that one must not be doing and not doing things that one should be doing and so then it's almost that this life was wasted because as much as you exhausted the sanchita karma, then you made up for it with the third kind of karma, agami karma, meaning all the karmas accrued in this life. Where do they go? They all go join sanchita. Scary prospect. <laughs> very, very scary prospect. So what is sanchita? That which leaves you exhausted, that which can never be exhausted is sanchita karma. Terrible. And so then how to exhaust this karma? You cannot. And therefore, the, it, it is that which can only be attended to by prayer and transcended ultimately by self-knowledge. And that is why self-knowledge, on the, the which is the absolute antidote to samsara, and that gaining which there is nothing more to do, no other karma affects. All the karmas drop in the wake of this knowledge that I am not the doer. That is the knowledge. But until that knowledge is gained, one can help oneself through actions that are specifically designed to ward off the effects of this karma. So that in the path of the sadhaka, the mumukshu, the spiritual seeker, the thorns are fewer and fewer. That is why the prayer is very important for a mumukshu, a seeker, a seeker of this knowledge, because there is many a slip, as they say, between the cup and the lip. Many a slip. So many times one doesn't feel like doing something. Suddenly one drops away. Suddenly one is derailed. Suddenly one is upset. Suddenly something happens and one questions everything that one has studied. Oh, what did this Upanishad do? Nothing. I studied this Upanishad, but nothing happened. And then therefore what? Therefore, this is the wrong conclusion. Therefore, all Upanishads don't do anything. So I'm, I'm going to stop studying. I did yoga one day, nothing happened. So therefore, I'm going to stop doing yoga. These are all wrong ideas that come from this, from this uh, mind, which is full of strong preferences, prejudices, fears, tears. And so therefore, prayer becomes very important so that these kinds of difficulties are warded off right at the start. And so any kind of prayer must be approached from this standpoint. And this prayer that we are studying, a prayer of atonement for all the karmas known and unknown, and is is no exception. So with these words, let us look at verse number two. Balye dukha tireko malalulita vapuhu. Stanyapane pipasa no shaktasche dindri ebhyo bhavaguna janitaha jantavo mam tudanti nana roga di dukha drudana paravashaha shankarana smarami kshantavyo me paradha shiva 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 bho shri mahadeva shambho so after prenatal situation, the next uh, stage in life is babyhood, infancy. And so what is happening in infancy? Not very nice things. What happens? Balye. And balye means in infancy. What did the person, the, uh, the, the baby here, he as the baby is recalling when he was a baby, what did he notice? That he was born with an addiction. Oh, I thought addiction happened in adulthood. No, 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 it happened in babyhood. What can a baby be addicted to breast milk? Breast, breast milk so much as breastfeeding. Addicted to the breast, 
latched on to the mother's breast I was. The Shankaracharya says, latched on to the mother's breast I was. Pipasa longing with a thirst, with a, with a kind of a insatiable longing, latched on to the mother's breast. And then Atireka Dukkha. Atireka Dukkha means unimaginable sorrows. Why? Starting with the body that is always unclean, with the nappy that constantly needs to be changed, and rolling around in one's own filth. And this is, you know, all kinds of difficulties, which again cannot be expressed. Same cry for colic pain, same cry for nappy change, same cry for hunger. The parents have to just do guesswork in the beginning. What is going on? Even the parents do not know because the child is unable to express itself and, and is easily disturbed, is, is uh, very difficult to put to sleep, to put to rest many times. And then, na shaktaha. Chet indriye bhyaha bhava guna janitaha. Meaning, having no say over the limbs and over the sense organs, the organs of action, no say over the limbs. The child is having pain in the back and wants to turn over. It cannot even flip over by itself until at least three or four months of age. It is just there helplessly crying. Too hot, cannot say anything. Too cold, cannot say anything. Teething trouble, cannot say anything. Cannot express its pains, its sorrows. And then what? It is lying there on a blanket. Perhaps the mother is doing something. All the work that needs to be done to maintain the house, the mother is doing while taking care of this baby. And then what? This is, of course, a tropical country, India, and all kinds of mosquitoes and other insects say free food. Oh, come. They send an SMS <laughs> to all the other <laughs> pesky insects who just come and feast off of this baby. What are they? You know, what are other kinds of insects like? What are they called? Bed bugs, uh, mosquitoes, wasps, all kinds of dam shakaha biting things all kind of biting things say oh this is not even defending itself wonderful free lunch come on over and you won't even get killed it's wonderful because if they bite the adult the adult will immediately give mosquito moksha okay yeah <laughs> immediately go like this baby won't do anything the baby cannot even move its limbs at will and so it becomes a it becomes a buffet for the mosquitoes. The body of this baby becomes a mosquito buffet and a bed bug buffet. And so then, uh, uh, so jantavaha, mam, tudanti, all these biting things are keeping on striking me. All these things are there. And then what? So there is one more thing here. What is that? Yeah. So the uh, the the limbs that are there, which are, you know, which are there just by themselves, helpless, no possibility of defending. And this also is there in case the primary caregivers are abusive. Again, the baby is defenseless. In that case, we have to call the primary caregivers as primary caregivers, okay? Yeah, because they're not doing their job as caregivers. And so the baby is defenseless, unable to defend itself from the target of the caregiver's anger, frustration, fear, insecurity, so many things. And again, the helpless limbs, the baby is not only defenseless, but the baby is needing to trust the same kinds of dysfunctional caregivers because it is helpless. It is needing to survive. It still continues to smile, even though the, the, the parents might be neglecting it or hitting it or not to, treating it very well. It continues to smile because it knows it needs to win them over just for the sake of its survival. So the defenseless limbs, because of that, because of this, the baby 
undergoes numerous difficulties. So therefore, infancy is not that great either. Infancy is not that great. Prenatal, pre-birth experience was not that great. Infancy, who knows what all is there. And then, nana, nana rogad, rogadi dukhat rudana paravashaha. Rudana paravashaha. Rudana paravashaha means just, uh, what is that, you know, just under the control of tears. Completely given to crying. Because that's the only form of expression. So the whole babyhood is just crying, 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 in between a few sunny moments and laughs. But generally speaking, this is what it looks like. Crying, crying, crying. And then why? Nana rogat. Nana doesn't mean grandmother. In some languages, Nana means grandmother. Okay. In Hindi, it means maternal grandfather. So here we are not talking of the grandparents. Nana means many. The one who is the, the one who is the in the in the spate of many kinds of difficulties, many kinds of dukkhas, many kinds of roga. Roga means disease, childhood diseases. You know, there is some, what is that, croup, some kind of cough, and then there is some uh, colic. There is, of course, cold and flu. So many things are there. Childhood diseases. One is prey to all these kinds of childhood diseases. And then, uh, rudana paravashaha, and completely, uh, you know, helpless, helplessly crying under the control of people who do not know how to take care of me. And even though the situation was so bad, what did I not do? Shankaram Nasmarami. I did not pray to Lord Shiva. Not once did I think, you know, there might be a way out. Maybe I should think of the Lord. No, so preoccupied I was with my own pains and sorrows that I did not give, did not even spare a thought to say, okay, maybe I couldn't talk, I couldn't say. Maybe I could even have thought. You know, there must be somebody who's in charge of all this. Whoever you are, whatever your name, help. I did not relate to you. I did not call out to you. And now it is years and years and years too late because this is recollected pain and sorrow. Whatever this is, please, Shantavya, only you can absolve me of this pain, of this internalized uh, um, difficulties pain, sorrow, fear. Only you can absolve me. No one else can help me. Oh Shiva, oh Shambhu, take me out of this difficulty. Om Purnamadav Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadagya Purnamevavashishyate Om Shanti Shanti Shantihi Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om Thank you. We would like to thank very much Swamini Svatma Vidyananda. Let's give her a big hand. So today she is going to continue at noon. Uh, from noon to 1.30 she will be here and will uh, offer a workshop. The, uh, she will be taking questions from everyone. So it will be broadcasted also online on Zoom, so you're most welcome to come, bring your questions and have a discussion. And in the evening satsang, we will continue with the teachings of the scripture. 
and um, the rest of the schedule for today. The location of uh, classes this morning, the TTC yoga class will be on the beach platform. And the beginners class will be on the Bay West platform and the intermediate class will be in the garden platform. So there is a change in the regular locations. Then we have brunch at 9.45, 11, the ashram welcome and history tour, living from reception. At noon, the class with Swamini Svatma Vidyananda in the garden platform. At four o'clock, the afternoon yoga classes. In the afternoon, we'll be back to the regular locations, beginners on the Bay West platform, intermediate on the beach platform, and TTC in the garden platform. And at 5.45, we have dinner, 7, the Gita Parayana, chanting a chapter from the Bhagavad Gita, followed by a short study in the temple. And at 8, we have evening satsang, and we'll continue the teachings with Swamini Svatma Vidyananda. Now we conclude with the final prayers, TTC. So for the TTC this morning in the class, we will uh, take some pictures. And uh, we ask if you can um, come with your yellow t-shirts uh, for the morning yoga class and your white pants. We have a request from one of our guests who was here at um, Christmas to dedicate the Mahamri Jaya Mantra to her friend, Susan Leon, who uh, was diagnosed with cancer. So we'll um, tune our mind to her healing and recovery as we repeat the Om Triambakam Mantra. Page 97. Om Om Trimbakam Yajamahe Suganim Pushtivadanam Murvarukamiva Bandanan Murkur Mukshiyamam Ritat Om Trimbakam Yajamahe Suganim Pushtivadanam Uravarukamiva bandanan rikyur mukshiyam amrita om trimbakam yajamahe suganim pushtivadanam Uravarukamiva bandanan rikyur mukshiyam amrita om sarvesham swastir bhavatu sarvesham shantir bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu, Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Badrani Pashyantu, Makashe Dukapag Bhavet, Asatoma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Brityur Ma Amritam Gamaya, Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnam Udachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnam Eva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Om Peace 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 Universal Prayer by Swami Shivananda O Adorable Lord, the mercy and love Salutations and prostrations unto thee. Thou art omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient. Thou art Satchit Ananda. Thou art existence, knowledge, and bliss, absolute. Thou art the indweller of all beings. Grant us an understanding heart, equal vision, balanced mind, faith, devotion, and wisdom. Grant us in a spiritual strength to resist temptation and to control the mind. Free us from egoism, lust, anger, greed, hatred, and jealousy. Fill our hearts with divine virtues. Let us behold thee in all these names and forms. Let us serve thee in all these names and forms. Let us ever remember thee. Let us ever sing thy glories. Let thy name be ever on our lips. 
with us abindi forever and ever. Om Bolo Sad Guru Shivanan Namaraji Ki Jai. Bolo Shri Guru Vishnu Devanan Namaraji Ki Jai. Please stand up for the Arati. You can follow at page 118. Om Jai Jarati Vinna Vinayaka Vinna Vinayaka Shri Ganesha Jai Jarati Subramanya Subramanya Kartikeya Jai Jarati Venugopala Venu Gopala, Venu Lola, Papa Vidura, Navanita Chora, Jai Jarati, Venkataramana, Venkataramana, Sangataharana, Sitarama Radeshyama, Jai Jarati, Gauri Manohara, Gauri Manmora Bhavani Shankara Sambhasada Shiva Uma Maheshwara Jai Jarati Raja Rajeshwari Raja Rajeshwari Tripura Sundari Mahalakshmi Mahasaraswati Mahakali Mahashakti Jai Jarati Anjaneya, Anjaneya Hanumantaha, Jai Jarati Datatreya, Datatreya Trimurti Avatara, Jai Jarati Adityaya, Adityaya Bhaskaraya, Jai Jarati Shanishwaraya, Shanishwaraya Bhaskaraya Jai Jarati Shankaracharya Shankaracharya Advaita Gurave Jai Jarati Sadgurunata Sangurunata Shivananda <coughs> Jai Jarati Vishnu Devananda Vishnu Devananda, Vishnu Devananda, Jai Jarati, Agastya Munaye, Agastya Munaye, Shri Rama Priyaye, Jai Jarati, Ayapa Swamiye, Ayapa Swamiye, Dharma Shastave, Jai Jarati, Jesus Gurave, Moses Gurave, Buddha Gurave, Jai Jarati Muhammad Gurave, Guru Nana Gurave, Samastar Vyonamaha, Jai Jarati Venu Gopala, Om Natatra Suryobhati Na Chandatarakam, Nema Vidyota Bantikato Yamagnihi, Ameva Banta Manavati Saravam Tasya Basa Saranindam Vibhati Om Gange Chayamune Chayvaguda Vari Saraswati Narmade Sindhu Kaveri Namastabhyam Namo Namaha Ameva Mata Chapita Tvameva Tvameva Bandhus Jasaka Tvamehevam, Tvameva Vidya Dravinam, Tvameva, Tvameva Saravam, Deva Deva Kaye Navacha, Manasendri Arava, Udhyan Manava Prakride Swabhavan, Kaharo miyadiyat sakalam parasmahi narayanai tisamar payahami sarvadharmam parityajamame kam sharanam vraja amtva sarvapapibhyo mokshayishami masucha.
Thank you everybody at home for joining us for this beautiful morning satsang. Have a beautiful day. And everybody here on the platform, please help us in clearing the satsang hall for the upcoming 